Hey, different world BG here, and welcome to Business Boost. Uh, every Thursday here during the week, uh, we talk to you, get you ready for the weekend, talk to you about finance, your career, business, how to boost it. And thank you all for joining me. Today we're talking about how successful people think and how you can use some of this knowledge to improve the power of your mind. Once again, this is Different World BG. Let's get right into it, guys. I want to tell you about a plan you can follow, which takes only a little time each day, five days a week, and which brings yourself out of all proportions of the time spent. For a moment, consider the things your mind has brought you. Everything you have, uh, your work, your relationship, your family, and others, your philosophy of life, all come to you as a result of using your mind. Now, consider the estimate made by experts. You have probably been operating on less than 10% of your mental capacity, much less. Dr. Herbert Otto, psychologist, educator, and chairman of the National Center for the Exploration of Human Potential, reminds us that many well-known scientists, such as the late Abraham Maslow, Margaret Mead, Gardner Murphy, Delbert Blair, Bobby Hemet, and Dr. Phil Valentine subscribe to the hypothesis that man is using a very small fraction of his overall capacity. Margaret Mead quotes a 6% figure. Herbert Otto writes, my own estimate is 5% or less. Neurological research at the UCLA Brain Research Institute points to enormous abilities latent in everyone by suggesting an incredible hypothesis. The ultimate creative capacity of the human brain may be for all practical purposes, as they pointed out, infinite. The capacity is infinite. Seize the computer analogy, man is a vast storehouse of data, but we have not learned how to program ourselves to utilize uh, these data for problem solving purposes. You're, yet from our eminent Soviet scholar and writer, Man under average condition of work and life uses only a small part of his thinking equipment. If he were able to uh, force our brain to work at only half its capacity, we could, without any doubt or difficulty whatever, learn 40 languages, memorize the large um, uh, encyclopedia from cover to cover, and complete the required courses of dozens of colleges and universities. That's 50% of the brain. That's hardly an exaggeration. It is the, the general or the generally accepted theoretical view of man's mental potentiality. Now, how can we tap this gigantic potential? Well, it's a big and very complex problem with many ramifications. But as Herbert Otto puts it, or points out, it is clear that the persons who live close to their capacity who continue to activate their potential have pronounced sense of well-being and considerable energy. They see themselves as leading purposeful and creative lives. If everything you have is result of using just 10% of your mind, consider for a moment what it would mean to use uh, to you and your family if you could increase this percentage. Now, I know none of this as a rule has, to, uh, has the slightest notion of the real capabilities of our mind. But believe me when I say that your mind can be compared to undiscovered gold mine. And it makes no difference whether you're 70 or 17, right? It makes no difference. Look at it this way. Your goal, your goal is in the future. Your problem is to bridge the gap which exists between where you are now and the goal that you intend to reach. This is the problem to solve. Robert Seashore, uh, once chairman of the Department of Psychology at Northwestern University pointed out that successful people are not people without problems. They're simply people who learned how to solve their problems. And that's exactly what we do at differentworld.com. There you have it. Living successfully, getting the things we want from life is a matter of solving the problems which stand between where we are now and where we want to be, the point 
where we want to reach. No one is without problems. They are part of living. But let me show you how much time we waste worrying about the wrong problems. Here's a reliable estimate of the things people worry about. Things that never happen, 40%. Things that can't, over the past, that can't be changed uh, by all the worry in the world, 30%. Needless worries about our health, 12%. Petty, miscellaneous worries, 10%. Real, legitimate worries, 8%. In short, 92% of the average person's worries take up valuable time, cause painful stress, even mental anguish, and are absolutely unnecessary. And are the real, legitimate worries, there are two kinds. There are the problems uh, that we can solve, and there are the problems beyond our ability to personally solve. But most of our real problems usually fall into the first group the ones we can solve, if we'll learn how. Now I'm going to assume you uh, to set upon a goal. Your problem is, uh, how do I achieve it, right? So you have a goal, how do you achieve it? Your goal might be a promotion at your career. It might be greater income, a beautiful home. It makes little difference what your goal actually is. But you had your goal and you know that you will become and you will achieve what you think about. That is, if you stay with it, you will reach your goal. But how? Well, the choice here that your mind tells you to play. What is your mind? No one knows, right? Perhaps the best way to describe it is to quote Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Archibald MacLeish. In his part of the secret of greed, a character says, the only thing about a man that is his mind is his mind. The only thing about a man that is a man is his mind. Everything else you can find in a pig or a horse. That's uncomfortably true. The human mind is the one thing that separates us from the rest of the creatures on Earth. And it even becomes to a species advantage as a result of the extent to which we use our minds. And yet it's the last place on earth the average person will turn to for help. Think about that. In order to reflect just a moment on the human mind, consider what it's accomplished. Human knowledge is at best more than the past 50 years than the normal preceding year. And in fact, it's estimated to quadruple in the upcoming years. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Stay with us. Welcome back to differentworld.com's premier podcast, Business Boost. Every Thursday, we left off talking about ideas, but every new idea triggers additional ideas. So that now we're in an era of compounding events on every front and in every area that scatters the imagination. Dr. Harlow Shapfrey from Harvard said, we're entering an entirely new age of man. He calls it the psychozoic age, the age of the mind. And you owned one, free and clear. Now let's look at a few facts. Now the average working person has at his disposal an enormous amount of free time. In fact, if you were told the hours in a year and subtract the sleeping hours, if he sleeps eight hours every night, you'll find he has almost 6,000 waking hours of which he spends less than 2,000 on the job. Now this leaves him 4,000 hours a year where he's neither working nor sleeping. These can be called discretionary hours with which we can do pretty much as we please. At least our minds are at ease. Now, so you can see the amazing results in your life, I wanna recommend that you take just one hour a day, five days a week, and devote this hour to exercising your mind. Pick one hour a day on which you can fairly regularly count and during this hour every day, take a completely blank sheet of paper. At the top of the paper, write your present primary goal, very simply. Then, since our future depends upon a way at which we handle our work, write down as many ideas as you can for improving that which you now do. Try to think of 20 possible ways in which the activity that fills your day can be improved. You won't always get 20, but even one idea is good. Now remember two important points that got us to this. One, this is not particularly easy, and two, most of your ideas won't be any good. Now when I say it's not easy, I mean it's like starting any new habit. At first, you'll find your mind a little reluctant to participate. 
and go out of the unfamiliar rut, but as you think about your work in ways it might be improved, write down every idea that pops into your mind, no matter how absurd it might seem. Let me tell you what will happen. Some of your ideas will be good. And with testing, the most important thing this extra hour accomplishes, however, is that it deeply embeds your goal into your subconscious mind, and that's the whole vital machinery working. At 20 ideas a day, if you can come up with that many, total 100 a week. Even if you don't think on weekends, an hour a day, five days a week, total, totals 260 hours a year. And still leaves you 3,740 hours of free leisure time. But this means you'll be thinking about your goal and ways of improving your performance, increasing your service, six and a half full extra working weeks a year. Six and a half 40 hour working weeks devoted to thinking, acting, and planning. Can you see how easy it is to rise above the so-called competition and will still leave you with 15 hours a day to spend as you please? Starting each day thinking you'll find that your mind will continue to work all day long. You'll find that at odd moments when you least expect it, really great ideas will be able to pop into your mind. And when they do, write them down as soon as you can. Just one great idea can completely revolutionize your work and as a result, your life. If you want to develop the muscles of your body, you take to exercise of some sort. Well, the mind is developed the same way, except that the returns are more conceivable proportion than the time and energy spent. I've used this system for years and it's given me some of the most gratifying and rewarding experiences of, of my life. And it costs only five hours a week, five hours out of 168. Is it worth it? It's like spending five hours a week digging in a solid vein of pure gold because your mind is all of that and much more. Each time you write your goal down on the top of the sheet of paper, don't worry or become concerned about it. Think of it as only waiting to be reached, a problem only waiting to be solved. Face it with faith and bend all the great powers of your mind towards solving it. And believe me, solve it, you will. Now let's briefly recap. This week, start spending one hour each day generating as many ideas as you can. Try for 20 a day on ways to improve what you're now doing. Remember, the achievement of your goal very likely depends upon it, as does your whole future. Number two, if everything you now have is a result of using, say, 5 to 10% of your mental abilities, you'll imagine what life will be like if you can increase this figure to 20% or more. Three, successful people are not people without problems. They're simply people who've learned to solve their problems. Four, don't waste time and energy worrying about needless things. 40% of them will never happen. 50% of them have already happened. 12% are needless worries about our health. 10% are petty miscellaneous worries. Only 8% are real. Try to separate the real from the unnecessary and solve those which are within your ability to solve. The last of all, the only thing in the world that can take you to your goals in life is your mind. It's effective use and following through on the good ideas that surprise you. Each of us has a tendency to underestimate his or her own abilities. We should realize that we have deep within ourselves a reservoir of great ability, even genius, that can be tapped if we'll just dig deep enough. It's the uh, miracle of your mind, if you would say. This has been Different World BG showing you how to tap into the inner realms of your mind. Join us for extended coverage on our Business Boost subscription program, available for an affordable monthly cost. Get brilliant ideas and the ability to consult with us at your leisure. Call us at 917-524-7337 and sign up today. Visit differentworld.com every day. Mm -hmm.